Hi, I'm Brandon Henry and I am a third year zoology student at University of Maine. I am in the School of Biology and Ecology and right now we are at the Wells National Estuary and Research Reserve in Laudholm, Maine. I am currently studying range expansion of blue crabs into the Gulf of Maine as part of Maine eDNA and I'm very interested in this project in particular because having grown up in New Jersey, I've been around blue crabs all my life. Their range expansion is a more recent shift and with the ongoing effects of climate change and other anthropogenic events, it's very important to understand how the shifts in Earth's ecosystems will be impacting the distribution and ecology of different species. The blue crab presence up here, this was not like an accidental introduction or anything of that sort. This is all a natural, natural range expansion on the crab's behalf. They have been periodically reported in the Gulf of Maine for over 150 years, particularly during warmer water cycles. They are very adaptable. We are still trying to determine whether or not the larvae are getting swept up here and they just mature into full-grown crabs or if there is a more viable long-term population that's reproducing and, that, and thus perpetuating itself up here. If there is a salt marsh, they are usually able to make do with it. They have had a very broad historical range and have even become invasive in some other parts of the world, such as the Mediterranean Sea. So they are highly adaptable and it'll be very interesting to see what their presence up in the Gulf of Maine will present and whether they adapt to have a long-term self-supporting population up here. Blue crabs, they have a multi-stage life cycle. So understanding how a species with such a complex life history from them being spawned out in the ocean, spending a period of time out there and then returning to a salt marsh afterwards and all the steps in between will be very important for understanding how like climate change will be affecting the life histories and biology of various different species and how they're responding to it and what adaptations are taking or where they may be going to find more ideal environments. eDNA is helpful because it can pick up on the traces of organisms which otherwise may not have been detectable especially creatures that may have been understudied or hard to detect otherwise. It is very useful for organisms that are elusive or may just not be common. And it allows for a means of knowing of their presence and where they are present without some of the hassle of the additional uh, sampling means. We'll be doing conventional field methods for this project as well as incorporating environmental DNA and we will also be gathering blue crab specimens from multiple different sites along their historical range in the mid-Atlantic and southeast as well as Canada and from them we'll be doing we'll be performing procedures such as stable isotope analysis and gut content metabarcoding. I hope my research will lead to a better understanding and knowledge of blue crab presence in Maine. I hope it'll also bring a better understanding for how range shifts take place in species with complex life cycles and I would be interested to see if having a more northern population can be important for the long-term survival of blue crabs as they're having trouble surviving in some of their previous habitats where waters are getting too warm for them.